With the latest upgrades, SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft is getting insane like never before. For many years, this broomstick has proven its potential and reliability through a series of successful missions. It's been certified by NASA, praised by astronauts who've ridden in it, and earned the title of the first reusable spacecraft built by a private company to carry crew and cargo to the ISS. However, Dragon still had some serious flaws under the surface. Issues that, if left unchecked, could have led to serious lawsuits or safety concerns. SpaceX didn't waste time. They tackled the problem fast. Not only fixing the flaws, but upgrading Dragon with cutting-edge tech that no other space company has ever pulled off. Let's dive into everything in this Tech Map episode. Before we get into Dragon's hardware upgrades, let's talk about a major change in its splashdown site, something that's directly linked to a recent serious issue. Since July 2024, SpaceX has quietly begun shifting Crew Dragon's main splashdown site, moving it from the East Coast, where it used to land in the Atlantic and waters off Florida, all the way to the West Coast just off California in the Pacific. Sarah Walker, SpaceX's Director of Dragon Mission Management, put it simply, After five years of splashing down off the coast of Florida, we've decided to shift Dragon recovery operations back to the West Coast. Why? Because this move helps protect people living in major cities like Miami, Jacksonville, and other densely populated areas across Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. Now let me explain a bit more so it all makes sense. We're talking about issues that happen when Dragon returns to Earth from the ISS. After undocking, the spacecraft fires its Draco thrusters for what's called a deorbit burn. Basically, it slows down just enough to start falling back toward Earth. Then, just before it hits the atmosphere, around 100 to 120 kilometers above the surface, Dragon separates from its trunk. The capsule is the main part of the spacecraft. That's where the astronauts or cargo are. It's protected by a heat shield, so it can safely survive the fiery re-entry. But the trunk? That part isn't designed to make it back. It has no heat shield, so it burns up in the atmosphere. And that's no accident. SpaceX actually wants the trunk to disintegrate on the way down. They use the atmosphere as a giant incinerator to safely dispose of that section, making sure nothing dangerous survives the fall. But the issue gets serious when you consider that SpaceX built the trunk section to be pretty sturdy. Because of that, there's still a risk that part of the trunk might not burn up completely and could fall back to Earth. Imagine if that chunk landed in a city, it would be a disaster, right? People could get hurt, and SpaceX might face lawsuits for not ensuring the safety of their recovery process. And in fact, this isn't just a what-if scenario, it already happened. On May 22, 2024, a staff member at the Glamping Collective Resort in Clyde, North Carolina, found debris that experts later confirmed came from the trunk of SpaceX's Crew-7 mission to the International Space Station. The pieces were discovered about half a mile from the popular Sunset Summit Trail. Thankfully, no one was hurt. After the incident, SpaceX and NASA agreed on a temporary fix. They stopped placing retired science payload boxes and other relatively large items from the ISS into Dragon's trunk. This extra hardware was increasing the chances that more debris could survive re-entry and fall back to Earth. But that's only a short-term fix. In the long run, SpaceX will almost certainly have to quietly redesign Dragon's trunk, using materials that are easier to burn up during re-entry. That could mean replacing the current high-heat alloys with lightweight composites or metals that melt at lower temperatures. Or maybe adding small explosive devices or chemical disintegration systems to break the trunk into smaller, more burnable pieces before it hits the atmosphere. This kind of tech has already been used on some satellites to lower the risk of space debris making it back to the ground. Speaking at a live press briefing, Sarah Walker said, what we'll do is implement a software change so the deorbit burn happens before we jettison the trunk, just like we did back with Dragon 1. That way the trunk will purposely fall into an unpopulated area of the ocean. 
So what do you think? If you got a better idea, let us know in the comments. Before the new upgrades are ready, SpaceX has a temporary plan. Aim the debris toward one of the most remote places on Earth, Point Nemo. It's known as the spacecraft graveyard, far away from human activity. By landing in the Pacific, SpaceX can better control when and where the trunk is jettisoned, which means less risk for people on shipping routes or on land, and more environmental responsibility. This change first showed up during the Crew-10 mission, launched in March 2025. The mission's goal was to send four NASA astronauts to the ISS for about six months of science and tech experiments. They're expected to return in September, landing in the Pacific, a move that allows the trunk to stay attached longer and fall into a safer zone like Point Nemo, far from any human activity. It's all about lowering the risk of damage back on Earth. That's not all. SpaceX is also upgrading the Super Draco engines to ensure a completely safe landing for the astronauts, who are literally putting their lives in the hands of this spacecraft. These upgrades are expected to make their debut on a brand new capsule, Dragon C213. This will be the fifth and final Crew Dragon ever built by SpaceX. It's set to fly its first mission in quarter two of 2025 as part of Axiom Mission 4, and that launch could be happening as soon as next month. So, what exactly is this upgraded landing system? On September 27th last year, SpaceX revealed a new safety feature for the Dragon spacecraft. In case of a parachute failure, the capsule can rely on its built-in Super Draco engines to perform a propulsive landing, helping the crew avoid a dangerous or rough touchdown. What's interesting is, this isn't some brand new idea. More than a decade ago, Dragon was actually designed to land using just engines, no parachutes at all. But SpaceX later decided to switch to parachutes as the main recovery system, and that engine landing concept was put on the shelf, until now. By design, Crew Dragon is equipped with eight Super Draco engines, arranged in four pairs around the capsule. These engines are part of the Launch Escape System LES and are hypergolic, meaning they ignite on contact between fuel and oxidizer, a technology developed by SpaceX. Each Super Draco produces about 16,000 pounds of thrust, 71 kilonewtons in a vacuum, far more powerful than the smaller Draco thrusters used for orbital maneuvers, which only produce around 90 pounds of thrust. Thanks to that power, the Super Dracos can perform a quick engine-powered landing, similar to how a helicopter touches down. This gives the spacecraft a crucial safety backup in case the parachutes fail and the capsule starts falling uncontrollably. Back when SpaceX first planned to use this technology on Dragon 2, they were already thinking about Mars. The idea was that Dragon could land directly on the Martian surface using its Super Draco engines part of a proposed mission called Red Dragon. Technically, that was possible. Mars has a much thinner and denser atmosphere compared to Earth, which makes parachutes far less useful when landing. In Red Dragon's case, the thin Martian atmosphere actually made propulsive landing more effective. So SpaceX kept developing the system. But in the end, they scrapped the plan and shifted their focus to Starship a vehicle with much greater potential for Mars missions. Another reason was the safety certification issues with NASA. The agency preferred splashdowns over propulsive landings when it came to Dragon, so SpaceX leaned into that instead. Now, thanks to major upgrades, SpaceX is pushing this spacecraft even further. Originally, NASA certified each Crew Dragon capsule for five crewed flights. But now, SpaceX is working with NASA to increase that number, potentially up to 10 or even 15 reuses per capsule. That would make Crew Dragon one of the most reusable crewed spacecraft ever built. Instead of building a brand new capsule for every mission, SpaceX is proving that it's possible to fly the same spacecraft multiple times with astronauts on board, much like how commercial airplanes are reused. As of 2025, SpaceX has flown 11 crewed missions to the International Space Station using Crew Dragon. And when it comes to NASA astronaut flights from 2020, 
over 70% of them have been carried out by SpaceX. That's a huge milestone. It shows how far the company has come in just over a decade and how reliable Crew Dragon has become. SpaceX is also becoming more and more critical to NASA's operations. A perfect example? The recent Crew-9 mission. Two of the astronauts on that flight, Sunita Suni Williams and Butch Wilmore, were originally supposed to return from the ISS aboard Boeing's Starliner. But due to ongoing technical issues with that vehicle, NASA had to call on SpaceX to bring them home safely with Crew Dragon. And that move by NASA says a lot about how much they trust Elon Musk's spacecraft. But how did SpaceX pull this off? Especially considering that, back when NASA was funding the development of new crew vehicles to reach the ISS, SpaceX received barely half the contract amount that Boeing got. In 2014, NASA selected both SpaceX and Boeing to build their new crew transportation systems. Boeing was awarded $4.2 billion, SpaceX just $2.6 billion. Boeing got $1.6 billion more simply because of their decades of experience in aerospace, which, to be fair, is a pretty common mindset we tend to trust those with a long track record. But even so, SpaceX proved their worth. Through sheer determination and relentless work, they managed to complete development ahead of their more experienced rival and successfully launched astronauts in 2020 with the Demo-2 mission. Since then, SpaceX has pulled off 11 successful crewed missions. Boeing, on the other hand, has faced one delay after another. Boeing's first attempt at launching Starliner ended in failure back in 2019. It took another two years before they managed a second test flight, off T2. This time, Starliner successfully docked with the ISS and completed most of its testing objectives. Despite multiple delays, the capsule did land safely at White Sands, and NASA considered it a major step forward but even then, the agency still required Boeing to fix several issues, including problems with valves and the spacecraft's propulsion system. Since that partial success, things haven't gone smoothly. Boeing has faced repeated setbacks and financial losses. As of February 2025, the company reported over $2 billion in additional losses related to Starliner, a crushing blow. It's a tough but important lesson. In any job, even if you have decades of experience, being complacent can cost you. Sometimes a younger, more eager team with fresh ideas and a hunger to improve can outpace even the most seasoned players. By 2023, SpaceX was making over $8 billion a year, with more than $500 million in net profit reported that year. While Boeing was still struggling to get Starliner off the ground, and SpaceX was gearing up for its 12th crewed mission, Axiom 4, Blue Origin. Well, they were busy dealing with internal drama.